Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today at Mansori to take a look at this, the Mansori DBX. We're going to take a full look around the car and take it out for a first drive to experience what this is about. But we are talking the Aston Martin DBX with significantly more power, with a wider body, new wheels, new extras that you can see all around, large spoilers on the back, and a completely redone interior as well. It's the DBX P800, as the name suggests, 800 horsepower. And today we're going to be hearing it, we're going to be seeing all about it and taking a first look at one of the latest introductions that's come from Mansori. Let's have a look at this then and get the DBX spinning. Here on the turntable so that we can take it all in. Of course, Mansori famed for their very wild creations. This is their first full package for the Aston Martin DBX, proving very popular in various regions around the world. For example, the Middle East and over in North America, where these perhaps are going to be right at home. But we're going to take a look through the modifications. As we can see the car spinning here, you see that this is a very, very aggressive Thing. the aerodynamic design, the large wings that you have at the rear, this diffuser, take a look at the exhaust tailpipes mounted in the center as well at the back. We have the P800 performance badges. We'll take a look at the engine very shortly and talk through some of the numbers, the facts and figures behind it. And also of course the interior of this car. But as it's spinning in front of us, notice the very wide wheel arches housing the 24 inch wheels that they have within. We'll allow it to come all the way around to go take a closer look at the forged carbon fiber that's used for all of the new components around the side sills for example and also at the very front of the DBX2 so that we can study this up close. It is a wild looking thing. In the black paint, Mansori doing all of their paint work here, finished with the lime green accents that you can see throughout. But obviously the DBX comes from Aston Martin, their introduction to the SUV market, the traditional look with the grille shape at the very front, the badges replaced with the Mansori wing style logo. But if you look here, you've got this forged chopped carbon fiber. Mansori do some incredible work with carbon fiber, different weaves, different styles. And the best possible example of that is this car the Carbonado Evo with the Stealth Bomber style weave in the carbon. They have done many different things over the years. The square style on the G-Wagon convertible just there. But in this case, they've gone for the forged carbon fiber, as I said, with the lime green pinstripes that you can see around, a theme that continues to the interior. We've got the shapes here tucked around, obviously lowering the front end itself, and then making the car significantly wider than standard with these new arches added all around. We've got the new pieces over the top of the vents that you have on the bonnet. And then these absolutely massive 24 inch wheels, a new Mansori wheel design finished again to match with that same color scheme with the brake calipers within. We also have the self leveling Mansori badges placed in the very center, even Mansori valve caps, every little detail. As we come around a new look to this side area, with the aero shapes, also the P800 badging, and these very aggressive side skirts that run the length of the side of the car, plus the new mirror caps you have also. As we come round towards the rear, Mansori badges continue to furnish the exterior. And then back here, this diffuser, as I mentioned, with those tailpipes that we're going to be hearing very shortly. And believe me, this car's V8 sounds awesome. Then further up the car, you've got a lot of space here at the back. You've got a fixed spoiler mounted on the rear of the deck lid, this coupe style shape, and then an additional spoiler sitting up at the very top also. So visually, it's dramatic. It's got a lot going on. It's a crazy thing to check out. But let's come and have a look as well inside the Mansouri DBX. We're in here, traditional Aston Martin door handles. Look at this. The color scheme continues with the lime green, with some bespoke inserts for the seats, the Mansouri embroideries that you have around, but all the different surfaces finished from the armrest to the controller here for your entertainment, to the pinstripes that run around the dashboard, the floor mats and the door cards also continuing with this theme with the different stitching, and all of this is completely bespoke. Mansori can create exactly what the customer would like from the car, even details like the start button being replaced with the Mansori graphic there in the center, and the rear of the car also finished to the exact same standard. If you have a look back here, again, door cards, floor mats, and seats all continuing and smelling lovely right now, that brand new leather smell. We've got the full panoramic roof up top, really very, very wild inside. But all of this, as I said, can be done exactly as you'd like it. Let's pop open the engine bay and come around and take a look at this. 
talk about the power plant and the new well power that it's making we've got the catch just here so four litre twin turbocharged v8 sourced from amg in stock form in the dbx you have 550 horsepower and 700 newton meters but those numbers are rather blown away by what this is making power goes up from 550 to 800 horsepower yes 250 horsepower more and torque goes from 700 newton meters to a thousand a thousand newton meters we're talking big big numbers that comes thanks to new turbos new exhaust new cooling methods, all sorts of things that have gone into this to make it create this new amount of power. And I imagine very shortly, it's going to sound pretty immense. Also, obviously handcrafted by Mansouri, placed on the very top of the engine cover just up there. Let me close this down for a moment. Make sure that shuts into place. Of course, I'll be jumping into the hot seat very shortly to go take this for a short little run to experience it for the first time. But before that, we're going to need to get it started up so we can hear it and then pull it on outside. Out the DBX starts to emerge then. It's a very nice company, Ford GT, and Le Mansouri, the very special Ford GT that I drove when it was originally introduced with the full, full conversion. One of the wildest of most wild cars. I'm gonna pull this outside and get ready to take it out for a short drive. Okay then, perfectly executed. Let's get some plates on it go see what it's like. This is not the first time that I've driven the DBX. Earlier this year, I actually had a couple of days driving one around Dubai, so I got familiar with that. You can go into gear either pressing D in the center or you can pull the upshift paddle. But to drive it normally, it's a sporty SUV. It's a practical car, but it drives fairly sportily as SUVs go. So we're in GT mode at the moment, which is your standard everyday normal driving mode. You have terrain and terrain plus as we go past an army of G-Wagons. And sorry, doing a lot of work with G-Wagons, with Cullinans, all sorts of Rolls Royces. The Lamborghini Urus is particularly popular right now and plenty more as well, of course, as their very, very wild creations I'm often here to take a look at. But what we're talking about with this then is a car that instantly is actually probably more docile than you might think. You're very aware of the V8, you can hear a lot of sound from it, but it's not crazy loud and intrusive. We do have the exhaust valve switch, so you can actually close that should you prefer. If you want the car to be just a touch quieter, you can hit the button and it makes life a little bit more pleasant from that perspective. Or you can run it in Sport or Sport Plus modes and have it even more wild, obviously, and we'll get to that very shortly. But like this in GT, you're sat nice and high. It has a firmer ride than standard, obviously with the very, very large 24 inch wheels and the new springs. And in fact, the rear tires are 355 section. They are gigantic rear tires. I'm not even sure there are many sports cars that run tires as wide as that. But just cruising along, we'll go out this way, we'll go find some country roads to enjoy this car driving down. You've got a new steering wheel, which has the nice hand-shaped grips, feels more sporty from the outset. You've got the familiar digital display that the car has. You've got all of the infotainment through the main system here, which is, as I've commented before, effectively the older generation system from Mercedes, the collaboration with Daimler, incorporating that into the DBX, um, all currently set up in German at the moment, but you've got the driving settings, your media, your infotainment, and everything else that you could want to have out of it on that perspective. This is a route I have driven many a time. You have this oddly faint sounding indicator noise in the DBX, but hey, not complaining about that. Let's roll this way and just gently being back on the throttle. Obviously, I'm not using a thousand newton meters, but you feel that it's torquey. You're heading uphill. Gearbox is obviously smooth, the auto gearbox that you have in here. And it just gives you that murmur of V8 in the background, that noise that I think is what lots of this is all about, right? And we'll get to a completely open stretch in just a second and be able to, in fact, let's use the mode button just here and pop it into Sport Plus. Boat opens up, drops some gears. Starts to sound a little bit more like it. Oh, we've only got that tiny little stretch. Obviously holding, oh, the downshifts are good. Not using the paddles yet, but you get some burbles and lovely sounds out of that, which is what this is about, right? Mansori 
are not creating a car like this to cater to the masses. This is something that is highly individual, very bespoke, obviously very limited, very rare. And if let's say you're in Dubai where there are lots of these kind of things rolling around, it gives it that sense of exclusivity and being able to have a car that really stands out. And I've seen that from my own experiences of being out there and seeing how you might be on the road and you could see three of these around you. Right, so back to the countryside, you don't have to change at all the time like this, I'm just enjoying becoming a bit familiar with it. Not necessarily the biggest fan of the shift paddle feel. I do like that though, when you're in manual and shifting yourself up and down through the gears. Now I am just going to turn on the AC because everything is slightly misting up in here. Do you go into auto? There we go. That's back on automatic. I mean, even in the middle of the rev range, you're very aware that this is a potent machine, despite the fact that it's obviously very big and heavy. That sounds good. So if I put my foot down just for a moment. Yeah, this is a cool old thing. And it does handle pretty dynamically. Even going through a corner like this, it sits surprisingly flat for such a big car. Now driving around Dubai does not exactly have many of these kind of roads. So I didn't get to explore and let's say exploit the performance and dynamic capabilities of the DBX all that much. But here it actually handles pretty well. I've pulled in for a moment because we need to have a sound check from this. Of course, the DBX in its standard form sounds good with the V8, but this car with the full Mansori exhaust sounds really quite bonkers. Now at the moment we have all the doors closed and you don't really realize how well they are serving the acoustic silencing properties. It is a lot quieter inside than you might think. Obviously you can hear those snaps, which sound awesome. But when I open the door, have a listen to what this is going to sound like now. Just looking forwards for a second already a little bit insane. Those cracks, and then listen to this from outside. Have a listen. Now this is of course with a bit of a soft limiter. You can't rev it over 4,000 RPM. One thing I don't like about the DBX, there's no soft close. If you do that, no soft close available for it. They say that's coming in the future. I think it's something the car rather needs, to be honest. Anyway, let's continue the drive. I think head back to Mansouri. I just pulled in for a second because I needed to put this into English to change a couple of settings. Unfortunately, the weather is not really on site, so we're driving in Sport Plus but in Drive at the moment. If you start manually shifting, it will then stay manual. If you want to go back into Drive, you can either press D in the center or hold the upshift. But this is where... Yeah. It moves. It's fair to say that this moves. Obviously just easing into it a little bit, not necessarily full redlining, considering it being a brand new car, but just having a first opportunity to drive this. And I bet if I pop the window down a notch, I hear that a lot louder. Yup. Wow. doesn't actually pitch all that much, which is perhaps a surprise. You might think something like this would get much more of a lean, but obviously it's got the much stiffer suspension setup as a result. And it does work. And to be honest, this is where the DBX feels so much more at home than say the Bentayga or the Cullinan, which are obviously more towards the luxury end and less carrying sporting qualities, which is what this really aims to have. And it's why I think in so many ways it's down to where you drive a car, how you feel about it. Listen to that. <laughs> I'm going to turn around and head back the other way. It's actually quite a fun car to shift in the middle of the rev range. So if you want to drive it in you know, a sporty way, you don't feel like you have to be redlining it. And I think that's something that makes a car more enjoyable these days because Let's face it, nobody needs 800 horsepower in an SUV. It's not about that. It's about having the potential for that and being able to enjoy the way that you do drive it. So for example, on a road like this, not necessarily flying down the road, just enjoying it, just having a good time, just shifting up and down, taking in the sounds of the V8 and the exhaust. And there are actually two different exhausts you can have from Mansori for this, the central twin pipe as we have here or a quad pipe set up two on each side 
which obviously carries a slightly different diffuser to be able to house it properly. But this works. This works quite surprisingly well. I didn't expect to necessarily like it as much as I am doing. I think from the exterior, the DBX kind of lacks something to begin with, and it's one of its biggest flaws. I pop the car back into GT mode with the car in general is that it doesn't scream that it's such an expensive car of this nature, you know, that it's an Aston Martin. Um, oh, I've ended up an individual. Perhaps that's going to be my next point. So visually, I feel it doesn't punch as high as an Urus or a Bentayga. In terms of the interior and the buttons, like with the Vantage, for me, there's just far too much going on. The older system from Daimler, and when I say older system, like really old system now, a couple of generations old, these fairly plasticky buttons that you have everywhere and all of the controls just aren't as premium feeling as you want from a car like this. Um, same goes for the steering wheel and the very plasticky buttons you have here. It's just, those things let the side down. Obviously, Mansori have done a wonderful job with the leather and the trim and all of the details and finishing it like this and just improving things a touch. But the base car to begin with, for me, isn't everything I think it should be. I think that's really what lets it down a little bit versus some of the competitors in the segment effectively. To drive, like I say, the sporty side of it that I hadn't necessarily experienced so much before has really transformed it in many ways for me. It comes much more into its own in this kind of driving environment, you know, nice twisty roads. Obviously a DBX is effectively a daily car, you know, it's not going to be a track car. I'm sure it's a lot of fun on the track, but that's far from what this is built for or introduced to the market to do in any real capacity. But like this, it does everything right. And I think that's part of the fun with all of this, something that's just a little bit different, that does things in its way and goes about business with a smile on your face when you're kind of dialing it up a notch, as we're gonna be able to do in just a moment on this lovely twisty section. It takes too long as well to go between the various different modes. Oh, taken first gear by mistake. Let's maybe get slightly out of the little village before we do that, but on the twists here. It handles surprisingly well, honestly. Throwing it up a road like this. This is quite impressing me, being able to make its way down these kind of roads with ease and more like a, a large coupe, really, like a large coupe or a large saloon car. I think that was obviously Aston Martin's intention. And it's safe to say they've done a pretty good job of that overall. Back at Mansouri's base, there is something I omitted from mentioning earlier that I should probably point out at this stage, which is to do with the Mansouri logo in the center. Now, typically in the Aston Martin, this is where you have the start button. It's been replaced. That's not actually the start button. If you're wondering how you do this, Mansouri, have moved it up to the roof, something they've done on a few of their different models. And when you press the brake pedal, it illuminates red, hit the button, and it starts up just like that. So let's have a better look around some of the other features and details here on the interior. You do have a nice screen. It's got a new skin specifically for the car. But as I mentioned, I find all of this a little bit too cluttered. All of the buttons, controls, finding the mode switches, for example. Obviously, you can raise and lower the car. You've got your hill descent control. You've got all sorts of assistance and other buttons and things that you might want from it. You have this little place here where you can store the key, which has the Aston Martin text on the side. Just tuck that in there should you want. We've also got obviously the AC controls and things. And then a little bit further back here in the cup holders at the moment, we have the exhaust valve controller where you can make it a little bit quieter or louder, depending what you like. You've got the cup holder storage space. You've got the armrest, which has quite a nice cubby with some USB ports down there as well. And obviously finished with this very cool perforated style that Mansori have created for this. And if I show you up a little bit more closely, you can see how they've basically made this by having that under layer in the lime green and then the perforations through the black. But it gives a very cool 3D style, almost like a, a test for the eyes effect when you're looking at it. And they've done that on the inserts and the door pockets and just around in a really nice way. I think it looks good, especially when you look through towards the rear. And obviously a customer can have this in any color, any combination, depending how exactly they would like it. In terms of the driver's view, digital dash in front of you, 
not particularly complex, I suppose in some ways almost analog-esque. You're just looking at the two round dials with a little bit of data in the middle. You can see your ride height and you can change what's in the center as well. The shift paddles I mentioned, I'm not the biggest fan of those, to be honest, and these buttons as well, this is your cruise control and this is your media and infotainment, but it is what it is. That's part of the car as it comes from Aston Martin. Speakers up there on the dash, which almost kind of wraps around at quite a high level around you. And obviously you've got this view of the new mirror caps as well from Mansori. So to turn it off, not a press of that, a press of this, which feels unusual, but I suppose it will become more normal in time driving with the car and step on out Mansori side steps as well just here and out slightly drying up now it was drizzling a few moments ago so what can i say that was actually quite an enjoyable drive more enjoyable drive than i think i anticipated out of the mansuri dbx obviously with my only previous experience at the wheel of a dbx being in a fairly uneventful environment we can say but this today has certainly excelled the sound as always from a mansuri car is very very impressive but it's quite cold out here, so I think I should probably wrap things up. A big thanks to the team at Mansori for the opportunity to take the new DBX out for a first drive to experience it and share with you guys as well. So let me know your thoughts down below. It's a wild creation from the team here at Mansori, as always. But I've enjoyed that one a lot. So thank you very much for watching, and I appreciate all of your support, and we'll see you again very soon. Cheers!